Hello, good morning or good afternoon. Uh, my name is Anand Hanna. I lead the uh, solutions architect team here at Securematics. Uh, I wanted to thank you all for uh, joining on behalf of my team. And uh, uh, today we are going to uh, discuss the new technologies with Juniper Networks, the Upstra and 128 technology. Uh, uh, I will to Shweda from Juniper Networks. But before that, uh, I would like just to say a little bit of introduction to Securematics. I know that all of the attendees today are our partners. So uh, I just wanted to uh, uh, say thank you for joining and uh, uh, give you a little bit uh, of uh, some updates about Securematics. So uh, we are a value added distributor. We try to mark ourselves as a, a unique uh, distributor, different from others. Uh, by different, I mean, uh, you will have a dedicated sales team, a real human who's talking to you, uh, uh, a dedicated solutions architect team uh, who is uh, available for your uh, technical supports and questions. Uh, you will have uh, also uh, uh, other teams from credit uh, and marketing who are very uh, uh, customer service oriented. Uh, we also have recently launched our partner portal. So if you don't have an account, uh, please uh, uh, do have an account. It will uh, make, uh, it will give you some many actually many services where you can find our inventory without uh, without uh, wasting or uh, trying to reach us so you can just simply uh, type in the sku and you will see the uh, the inventory status you can check the purchase order status you can check and download and view your codes do an rma check our uh, uh, inventory as i mentioned uh, also, uh, I wanted to remind you about our uh, demo pool. We really have a, a, a very well and refreshed uh, demo pool for, for all the products from uh, switches, routers, firewalls. So please utilize that. We are ready to ship it within one day. So uh, uh, please utilize all these services. Uh, I just, I think I'm good. I, I will just hand it out now to Shweda to uh, discuss the uh, technology with you. But before that, I uh, I don't wanna forget mentioning our uh, great team here. This is the picture for, uh, uh, for our sales uh, team. I'm sure uh, you are familiar with the faces uh, and uh, uh, with our um, the whole management team. Uh, thank you. Shweda, the floor is yours. Thank you, Anand. Uh, good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Let me start by sharing my screen. Anand, can you see my screen? Can you please confirm? We can yeah. see it. Yes. Thank you. So today we are going to go over our newest acquisitions, that is Abstra and 128T. So without further ado, let's dive into what Abstra is first. So as you see here with Abstra, you might have heard the buzzword that is it is automated and intent-based networking. So what does that mean? What is intent-based networking? To, to put it simply, a user will come in and define, hey, I want my data center to look like this. So I want like five spine devices, uh, 10 leaf devices, the cabling should be like this. So it the user will define the what of the network. Now, Appstar will take all of those instructions and it will the software will convert the, all of those instructions into configurations. So that is now defining the how of the network, how it will do it. It's all like uh, the problem, the related uh, problem related to Appstar. So the user does not have to worry. It just needs to define its intent. And then our telemetry services, which provides like closed loop automation, it will provide uh, the user with the when and why. So if something goes down or something doesn't matches to the user's intent, 
the app store will let the user know hey this is the cable uh, which is not connected properly this is the not the port where it should be connected it should be a different port or hey you said five spine devices but only three have spun up so the others two i think there is some issue so uh, this is the issue please go and redo it or go and please check it if it's proper or not so the telemetry over here is continuously collected from the network and it is then compared to the user's intent. And if there are any deviations in the network, then the App Store will provide the root cause identification. So it will not only just let the user know that, hey, this is the problem, it will let also let the user know like why this is the problem. And this continuous validation, it spans across all of the stages so, uh, for the design, build, deploy, and assure state. All of these stages, it does continuous validation. Now, in terms of design, we are vendor agnostic. So we, App Store works very well with Cisco, Arista, Sonic, Dell, and many other vendors over here. And in fact, you, the customer can deploy or an organization can deploy multiple fabrics with the integration of all of these vendors. And it simplifies actually the data center interconnect use case. So if there are like 10 uh, different data centers at different locations to interconnect them and to manage them, Abstra does that job seamlessly. And we also, Abstra also use automated EVP and VXLAN deployment, that is another term you might have heard which we generally use with the data center so that is the industry standard protocol which abstra uses and juniper has been using this evp and vxlan technology since a long time now so now when building a new data center abstra uses a single source of truth over here and this is uh, provided by Abstra with the help of a knowledge graph, uh, which Abstra create by itself. So it, uh, while creating a blueprint that is vendor specific or cabling map, it uses this single source of truth with the help of knowledge graph. And now with data center deployments, you might have heard that the zero touch provisioning is a must feature where like we just open up the boxes, we plug them in and they are configuring themselves. So there is no like network admins or working on it, doing uh, actually logging into the box and putting in the con configurations which are vendor specific. So we, the, it needs to have a zero touch provisioning feature. And Abstra not only delivers that, but like similar to our Juno's operating system, if you have worked on it or heard about it, Abstra also has the rollback configuration. Now, what does that mean? So if a user goes in and creates a blueprint and stages that blueprint, and now see, hey, this is not exactly what I wanted to do. So it can just roll back to the previous configuration, to the previous stage with just one single click. And also for the upgrade or maintenance, uh, we have a different maintenance mode uh, where the traffic of, of, for upgrading the devices or multi-tenancies, it is used, deployed using a different link or different path. So it does not interfere with the actual traffic. And with our assurance stage, Abstra makes sure that it continuously validates the operational state of the network. So against the user's intent, so again, like checking that if whatever the intent that was defined, what of the network, it does go with the when and why of the network. So this closed loop automation pro, uh, process, it provides a huge deal of value for our customers because it, helps to eliminate uh, the human error. It, it is not time consuming, it is flexible, scalable, it avoids any outages, and it provides a faster remediation if there is any issue. So this helps the IT team a lot. Moving on, the AOS is the Abstra operating system and it helps build a logical system and it can manage it within minutes. So you can have define your uh, underlay, your overlay, what the data center will look like. You can define the intent based analytics. Like uh, I talked about like, hey, if my all the all, all of the five spine devices uh, switches are up or not, and you can send that intent to the telemetry tool and it can, uh, Abstra can work on the back end to make sure it is up. 
in, uh, if the customer or an organization thinks like, hey, I want to scale my network right now. So I want to fit in more users over here. So it can scale anytime. Uh, you, it can change the goal anytime. You can say now I had a, this different goal where I wanted to make sure that my data center is catering like uh, different SaaS applications, but now I want to do something else. You can all, all change your goal at any time and you can make sure, AppStar will make sure that the change is in accordance with the user intent. And again, as I said, it's like vendor agnostic. So it works with where, uh, other devices. So even like when a network administrator goes in, they do not have to worry about, hey, I should know like Cisco specific language syntax or Juniper specific syntax. There's no need to worry about that. Just define whatever you want to do with Abstra and Abstra will take care of it. So this is what a continuous validation looks like for Abstra. So as you can see here, uh, so I have uh, created a blueprint, I have deployed it, and it shows that my, uh, the deployment state is that four has been succeeded, but there is one failure. So there is something wrong with one of the deployment. And if I go into the service status over here, you will see that with the IP fabric, there is some cabling anomalies. So somewhere in the, my data center deployment, there are cables which are either not connected or the, it is a bad cable or something like that. So now I want to know exactly like which cable because I'm, I'm not gonna go and just check each and every cable. So now I want to know which cable exactly on which devices. So if we look, take a closer look at the cabling mishap, so we will see that the port one on this particular leaf devices, it should be connected uh, to port two on spine one, but that's, a not, that's not the case over here. It has been swapped and it, it has been connected to port one over here. And that's why it is red and that's why it is an anomaly because it is violating the intent. So that's not my, what my user said me to do. And that, so Abstra will give you exactly the root cause analysis, like where something is going wrong. Now where uh, you want to position Abstra. So if like a customer comes to you and says, hey, I have a uh, different uh, data centers at different locations and I want to connect them uh, seamlessly and manage them seamlessly. So that's where Abstra comes in. Or if a customer comes in and tells you like, I have a big, very big data center with multiple applications hosted on it uh, and with leaf and spine architecture with the different routing protocols in it and I want to manage it, Abstra is the solution. The third use case will be like, hey, I have again like different data centers with different vendors in it. And I want to make sure that the vendors talk to each other uh, and there is no problem with the integration and when I remove or add any switch or I replace like a Cisco switch with Juniper switch. I want to make sure there is no problem with it. Now again, Abstra will help the, your customers with that. So these are some of the uh, like customer pain points of which you need to look for. Uh, like, hey, there's a, to, it takes too many people to go in and configure a data center or to manage a data center. So we, we Abstra provides a simple automated way where it can take care of all of those problems for you. Or uh, if there is like a human error, because the, obviously we can um, all make mistakes. So a network administrator can go in and if it has, they have to like, configure hundreds of devices at a time, or even just like take the same configuration, copy paste it, they might miss some of the switch. They might miss some of the devices. And uh, to find out the exact error, where it is in which data center, at which particular switch, it, it will take a lot of effort and a lot of time. And it uh, Abstra saves all of that by using a single source of truth and using our intent-based analytics. Or if like a customer comes in like, hey, there uh, for any of the deployments or if I do even a simple change in my data center, it takes a lot of time to upgrade those changes on all of the devices. And I, I do not want it to be manual. I just want to, you know, hey, defi define it. Like at uh, midnight every day, I want to make this change or I want to uh, pick out, take some uh, telemetry information from this particular switch and do further processing on it. And Abstra can help you with that because the changes are made within just hours or days instead of weeks or months. 
So th these are the points uh, which you need to look for, which the SEs need to look for with, when they talk to their customers about the data center opportunities. Uh, any questions up until here? Awesome. Uh, so uh, this is our uh, data center, Jun Juniper data center fabric architecture. And as I said, like we use industry standard EVP and VXLAN, that is a technology which is like most of the data center uses over here. And all of our switches, they run just one operating system and the, that operating system does have telemetric capabilities. And now we have added abstract fabric conductor on top of it, which helps with the intent based networking and closed loop automation so it, actually these two this combination is an extremely powerful for uh, man, as and it can act as a powerful management tool so uh, and it helps uh, as i mentioned like a lot of shortcomings uh, with uh, where customers have, might have faced in the past with especially with the fabric management so this is really a compelling solution with our acquisition of abstra and again, uh, it, uh, the AP Abstra Fabric Conductor, it does support APIs and it does support all of the tools. So even if like a customer or an organization wants to move down the path of like say infrastructure as a code in the future, they can use those APIs. They, they can integrate those APIs with third-party DevOps tool and so because it is open, it is multi-vendor. Now, let me talk about what Gartner and Forrester thinks about Abstra. So even before uh, the acquisition, like the uh, Abstra was, uh, we were in the magic quadrant of 2020 for data center networking and cloud networking as a leader. In fact, uh, the cool thing over here is like Gartner uh, I described Abstra as a cool vendor in enterprise networking and the, up until then, before Abstra participated in it, Gartner did not have intent-based networking system category. But when Abstra was uh, came into the picture, came into the market, Gartner did introduce this category, and Abstra was considered uh, declared as a leader in it. And as you see, like some some of the uh, uh, statements over here by Gartner that it reduced the delivery time by 50 to 90 percent. It reduces the outages and everything. So, all of this has been said by Gartner or Forrester about Abstra. So moving on, what, what is the licensing? And I know many of you are interested in it. What's the skew, what's the pricing, pricing structure looks like. So for Abstra, we have two different service tiers. The first one is uh, advanced, where it, you will get the Abstra fabric conductor, the AFC, the fabric management. And with premium, we, you will get the fabric management along with the integrations. So if there's like VMware, vSphere, or there are dynamic BGP in, to the servers, so or uh, an SXT, then, then the premium feature will come into uh, play over here. And what does this mean that we have different uh, tiers of uh, classes for devices? So on the right, you see here, so these are all of the Juniper devices on which we do support Abstra today. And these devi uh, devices we have defined into different tiers, different class one, class one, class three, depending on their system like if it's a fixed system platform then it's a class one or if there are others then class or class three so depending on the uh, devices that the customer has and depending on the services that the customer needs from apps these are the different pricing structure queues over here any question on SKU and pricing there aren't any questions yet Shkoda. okay thanks Bill. And if you want to learn more about it, uh, we have our own Abstra Academy where you can go in and there are three different courses. Uh, those are actually long courses, but that will make you the Abstra Automation Architect. And everything you need to know about Abstra is in those courses. So it will walk you through like what Abstra is, how it works, how it works for different deployments and uh, every use case. So it's all over there in those courses. We also have our YouTube playlist. So if you just want uh, to see a particular quick uh, glance at a particular feature while uh, you're going into a meeting with the customer, then we also have our own playlist on YouTube. 
Now, once you have all the theoretical knowledge, you want to test it out. You want to see how it exactly works because we are, it's like you, you might feel that you have heard a lot about intent-based networking and analytics and closed loop automation, but I actually want to see what it gives out, what it actually, how it operates with other devices. So we have our own cloud-based lab environment. So you can go to vlabs.juniper.net. It's open for everyone. And we have pre-built network topologies over here. So it's uh, available on demand, just reserve it for free and just play around with Appstar and it will show you like, hey, how Appstar would work, especially works with Juniper QFX switches over here. And there are the different use cases. All the documentation is available. You just need to go through documentation and deploy the similar use cases uh, in this lab environment. Also, if you go to uh, JPartner training, uh, the, if you have access to JPartner training, we have the, we did uh, Abstra sales enablement in the past. So they, they are pre-recorded sessions. It's all available over there. So if you have login or if you don't have one, just uh, talk to Anand or myself or Bailey, then we can get you your logins and you can just go into the JPartner training and access those resources too. Okay, so before we move on to our next acquisition, any any questions about SKU, pricing, structure, licensing, anything else? I don't have any questions yet, um, but if anybody does have questions, you can submit them to the chat box or the question box. Awesome, thanks Bailey. So moving on to our second acquisition is 128T, that is, we call it as a session smart routing and we will get to know in a couple uh, some time like why we call it session smart routing so 120t right now is an sd-wan solution it's sd-wan technology and it's the only technology right now which does not require tunnels for sd-wan so that means this leads to huge savings in bandwidth and improved performance and big breakthrough economics uh, so we make uh, session smart routers, or you might hear the term SSR in the future. So these are the software routers that they are basically operate on sessions, different sessions. And unlike uh, traditional routers or legacy VPN solutions that operate based on tunnels, we do not do tunnels or VPNs or anything. It's all just uh, based on session, talking to each other on session. You can uh, actually have these routers uh, on x86 white boxes, or you can have different deployments, which I'll talk about. And this is our like a recent uh, acquisition, which is by Juniper. And we have now integrated this 120T technology with our MIST AI, that is uh, our uh, AI engine Marvis. And we have also integrated it with our van assurance capabilities. And that's why it's right now, it's like a superior ST van solution out in the market. Uh, so a quick snapshot at the 12080 customers is uh, so we uh, we provide SD1 uh, connectivity to the largest retail pharmacy uh, with more than 10,000 locations. We also nearly connect like 800 hospitals and 200 clinics for the largest provider of healthcare. We are also in the automotive industry, and we work in partnership with Microsoft uh, to pre. Uh, provide services to our US uh, Defense Department. And we also provide connectivity to our market leader in human resources and payroll. And our, our last customer over here is uh, our global oil field services company. So we also provide sd wan connectivity or sd wan solution to them. So what is a 12080? What is session smart routing? So it's all software based, it's all distributed router based and innovative technology, and it works on a secret sauce over here that we call as SVR. So that is our secure vector routing. So our session smart router, it is a key piece of this entire SD-WAN solution. And together with this abstract, uh, sorry, and together with this 12080 conductor, which is our management uh, platform over here, we are enabling enterprises and service providers. So to build them like a, 
uh, service center uh, centric fabric which is which provides them with simplicity uh, with provide them with uh, security and improved performance so when we uh, look at the traditional SD-WAN solution, those, those routers, they talk to each other on the basis of IP addresses. They uh, exchange packets with each other. But we are making a shift in that design where we now the routers are talking to each other on the basis of sessions. So that means that we are enabling the network to understand the applications and services over here instead of just the IP packets. And why? Why like 120AT came up with this session smart technology? Why they think that the SD-WAN industry needed a shift or needed a change? Because most of our applications and services that we use today, they, they are based on sessions. And most of the uh, network, it involves like useful exchange of information between endpoints. And again, they are that are based on sessions. And that is why uh, 120 AT folks felt the need of moving towards session smart routing. So instead of uh, putting a session, we might have heard about the firewalls uh, that we use in a network or the load balances. They are based on sessions, but the routers usually talk on basis of IP addresses. So 120 AT folks, they thought that instead of, uh, why not put the same session state in those routers? So that will help us like integrate with uh, other when uh, network functions uh, which are native to only routing and again it's like it's based on our secret sauce as we are and we will actually see what that is so the 128t conductor it is like a single pane of glass it is similar to like how we saw for abstract fabric conductor it is a management uh, orchestration tool with uh, which provides zero touch provisioning Now let's talk about like what, what the technology look, uh, looks like at a 30,000 foot level. So you see here, we have different networks. Uh, we have MPLS in the picture, we have internet, we, uh, it can also be like uh, LTE or satellite, microwave and uh, others which one can use. So we, we are transport agnostic over here. And now we want to connect our private cloud. We want to connect our SaaS applications, public cloud. Uh, we also want like connectivity to the public internet. And now let's say a customer wants to uh, connect all of these small branches, large branches, home offices to an HQ or with all of these particular sites, which I mentioned. Now, the simplest way to do here is to place these 128 t routers in all of these different locations and to manage them with the help of the 128t conductor so a conductor is our network orchestration tool that provides the orchestration services it does not participate in any of the routing decisions or uh, data path decisions like which route or which path uh, the, this particular session should travel. It just lets uh, all of these routers know uh, what the policy is, and it just lets all of these routers know what to do. This this conductor can also get the stats from all of these routers, and the, uh, the and which can provide visibility uh, to, for for all of these routers. So uh, as I said, this router can be hosted in public cloud, private cloud. They can also be deployed on x86 white boxes. So these are x86 boxes are like low cost devices with just uh, with wired and wireless infrastructure. They're also available in uh, the marketplaces of all of the public cloud. So talk about AWS, Azure, GCP, Alibaba and others. So if you want uh, everything to be on cloud, you can also move towards uh, the customers can or the organization can also move towards cloud or if uh, they can also be deployed on any appliance virtual appliance like vmware esxi kvm or any other hypervisor <laughs> so now the sessions between these 128t routers are guided on based of on services so it's uh, this session uh, between two routers is like a two-way communication. So for example, say like I'm sending packets to YouTube and YouTube is sending packets to me. So now this is a valid conversation between YouTube and myself. Mm -hmm. But if YouTube directly starts like sending packets to me without me asking for it, then that's an attack. 
and we can learn all of uh, this information actually from this session directionality like how this session flows flow is and uh, these are actually the inbuilt characteristics of a particular session over here so as i said like unlike uh, traditional routers which talk to each other on the basis of ip addresses the 128t uh, routers since they are talking uh, they are session based they are actually connecting users or, or applications to these services different services now this helps to simplify the network because now the we can go in and define the services in a human language with uh, independent of location so we can define it in simple terms in simple words uh, all of these services and 128t will make sure that it is communicated across all of these routers <coughs> sorry about that uh, these routers can also be like added modified uh, anytime at any stage in your network and it can uh, also recognize thousands of other applications. We saw that SaaS applications, Office 365, Facebook, Gmail, and it can help uh, to provide appropriate SLS that has been defined that by that particular customer or network admin. It can make sure that it is providing that type of SLS for that particular application. So uh, the connection between these two routers, it uses secure vector routing. So that that uh, that is what I mentioned that it does not use any VPNs and tunnels, uh, but still these connections are encrypted and authenticated. So how does that do? Like you will say like, hey, we are not using any tunnel. So how can uh, we are making sure that the connection that the traffic is still encrypted? So what we are doing with 128T, we actually uh, removing the, the extra headers that are usually added when it is going through a tunnel, which are, we are actually removing just that feature. So making it sure uh, that we do not need all of those tunnels, but still the traffic is encrypted and it is moving in a secure way. And this helps uh, to reduce the bandwidth by 30 to 50 percent. And this is not what other SD-WAN technologies or other SD-WAN vendors are doing out there in the market. This uh, and each of this session, the 128D sessions between these two routers, it's a separate segment itself. So you can do virtualization, dynamic slicing, uh, network stretching, and all of these features over here. Now these routers can act as a firewall too. So we they provide fully functional uh, certified ICS certified layer two to layer five firewall functionalities that it, it helps enable this SASE architecture, secure access, secure service edge, services edge. Sorry. So uh, and they can also be service chain to each other. So different firewalls can be uh, act uh, can be connected to each other to act as just one firewall based on their functionality. It provides like uh, different secure uh, security measures uh, like IDS, IPS, uh, and other uh, security measures which we have heard about. Now, what what is the benefit of 128T over here is uh, because right now 80% of the world's traffic is already encrypted so uh, when i like talk when i use like applications on my phone uh, i do not need routers we all do not need uh, routers all the time to provide us security because applications can do that by itself they can encrypt everything that is coming on my phone directly from the browser now 128t actually detects it automatically detects can detect if this traffic is coming is already encrypted or not with different encryption technologies and if it is then it will not re-encrypt them it will uh, not add another like double layer of encryption on th them and this actually helps a lot in performance saving So this actually helps uh, with different uh, performance uh, savings because now there is no uh, uh, another layer of added encryption in it. And also uh, these routers are uh, based, uh, they, they define the path uh, flow symmetry or the path and can select paths based on the SLAs. Uh, they can do all sorts of like traffic engineering, load balancing on their own. So uh, the network administrator do not have to uh, take care of that and uh, for the slas uh, the routers can actually monitor the path uh, and slas and to make sure if there is any 
uh, they make sure that there is no loss, delay, jitter, or any kind of failure. And the failovers with 128 key are instantaneous. So because we, we are not using any kind of tunnels or VPN technology or anything over here. So if uh, even any session fails, the, uh, the 128T can spun up another uh, session very quickly because there is no need of backing of, of tunnels or like setting up a tunnel, nothing like that. So we call this as a zero loss delivery because there is no loss or uh, even if uh, there is a failover over in this architecture. And finally, we use the conductor uh, for zero touch provisioning, planning, automation and management. And all this conductor and the CLI, it's all again the rest uh, based on APIs. So the uh, uh, administrators or the operators can use uh, other third-party DevOps tools to make sure that it's work it's working perfectly and can automate itself. So I, I talked a lot about 128T for from the last slide. So. Any questions on anything uh, which you think that I need to simplify over here? Shweta, we did have one question come through. Um, someone asked, does Abstra integrate with 128T? No, right now uh, they are uh, working as two separate entities. There is no integration between Abstra and 128T, but we have uh, integrated, uh, we have integration of 128T with our WAN assurance. So, you might have heard that we came out with our missed van assurance uh, which provides like uh, which gives you again the service level uh, expectations similar to wired assurance and we are improving on it so we have uh, added the integration but now 120 routers will also give you the van assurance capabilities but no there is no integration between abstra and 120 okay thank you mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, these are again the same feature which I talked about. Uh, so I'm I'm not gonna go over uh, them. So I, I said that it it will help the, because of there is no tunneling VPN. It helps re, uh, reduce the bandwidth performance, and all of the routers they can act as a firewall also. So it's like we we use the zero trust policy where everything is denied by default. So uh, if anything uh, the user wants to allow any traffic, they need to specify a per policy and they can be as particular as they want with that policy. And then only the routers will pass through the traffic. And again, with a conductor, we, they can have the session visibility, the application insights, and that kind of granularity for their network, the SD-WAN network. So now let's talk about network uh, platform licensing, how it works. So our routers, they are based on different tiers of bandwidth throughput. So depending on the requirement uh, for a particular sd one networks, we have uh, different tiers of routers. We do not have a, a different uh, licenses for different features. It's just one all built in one license. So it's nothing like, hey, I want uh, network virtualization I, or I want just secure vector routing. Nothing like that all comes uh, like one package. And the conductor the, that I talked about, the 120T conductor, it is actually included uh, in, uh, in that package, in that uh, SKU. And we have same licensing feature, whether they uh, decided to go with the routers that are hosted on-prem or they are uh, hosted on the public clouds. Still, it's the same licensing across uh, all of the deployments. And similar to Juniper Flex licensing term, we have a sub software subscription-based licensing even for 128T, so it's like one, three, or five-year term license. And again, the software maintenance, it is included in the subscription. So uh, we will see how the SKU looks like, what it means exactly, and you will get a clear understanding of what I talked about on this one. Moving on, as I said, that uh, 128T is platform independent, so it is supported on bare metal server, hypervisor, cloud platforms. Uh, we use a CentOS and Red Hat as the uh, operating systems. And uh, right now, uh, we have uh, our, the 128T routers also work well with uh, Silicon, Laner, Dell, Arrow. So they, you can, um, a customer can actually install the, those software routers on all of these devices and it will work seamlessly for them. 
So it's it's all platform independent and location independent with uh, when it comes to 12080. Yeah. So this is what a SKU will look like. So if you see here, uh, like as I said, that uh, all of the routers have different tiers for bandwidth. So depending on the requirement, uh, if suppose like a uh, suppose say a customer has a requirement of 10 Mbps, and uh, now they will uh, look at the, and they want the subscription for three years, then this is the SKU that would work really well for them. This is the SKU that would work really well for them. So uh, yeah, it's it's all depending on the uh, bandwidth, and it's all depend on the how many uh, years of subscription the customer needs or organization needs. So it's as simple as that. Nothing beyond this. So there is nothing like hey for a 120T conductor, there is a separate one. Now there is a uh, for software service, there is a separate skew. Nothing like that. Just this one skew. That's it. So in summary, uh, this is uh, th these cover the same features, but this is what makes it stand out compared to our other SD WAN competitors out there because they do not have uh, this simplicity because they use tunnels overlays for their technology. They do, uh, they do not have a zero trust security model, and at the same time, they provide the authentication and encryption without adding additional uh, overhead on that uh, traffic. So because there's no additional overhead, the performance is great, uh, the scalability is great, and there is savings with bandwidth and uh, operational costs with 120 And uh, if you want to learn more about 120 we have this enablement tool uh, of 120 So you can just click on it. You can find different sandbox networking. Again, you can ha find the customer scenarios over there. You can uh, uh, like spin up your own uh, environment and poke around with 120T, how it looks like, how it works with uh, Juniper, uh, how it works with uh, other devices, other platforms. You can take a look at all of that over here. And again, uh, if you go to a J Partner training, you will find trainings on 128T2. So uh, if you want to know more about it, uh, you can go through those trainings, go through this and Still, we can do a deeper dive. You can reach out to Bailey, Anand, or myself, and we can make sure that we get you in touch with the appropriate resource, and we will do a deep dive for you all. So that's all I got with these two acquisitions. Uh, so any questions, any concerns, any feedback, comments? Yeah, we do have one question. Um, is WAN Assurance just for 128T or SRX also? So when we release the WAN Assurance, it, it is for SRX. It is still for SRX. So even if uh, the customer has SRXs uh, in, the, uh, in their deployment, they can use WAN Assurance feature. But now with 128T, we have also integrated the 128T routers with the WAN Assurance. So it is both. It's not like with this acquisition, we are removing the SRXs from the van assurance. Okay, thank you. Um, will you be able to manage the SRX at some point? Yes, I mean, that's a plan. Uh, that's uh, the uh, on the roadmap. I'm not uh, sure there is no like a target date for it, but that's the plan to ultimately uh, go ahead and also add SRXs to this 120T platform. So they are also managing the, uh, along with the 120T routers, they're also managing our SRX plat uh, product line. Great. Give it one more minute to see if any other questions come through. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay, looks like that's all the questions for today. So thank you, um, Shweta, for your time. And thank you, everybody, for attending. Yes, and uh, if you have any questions further, just uh, shoot an email to Anand or myself, and we'll answer those for you. And yep, thank you absolutely. all for your time today. 
Thanks, Shweta. Mm -hmm. All right, have a great week. Uh, thank you, Billy. Thanks everyone for joining and uh, looking forward to uh, hear from you. Thank you.